if you're posting something on social media or in one of these chat rooms that you think after the wine wears off you're going to regret it you should probably you know delete it before you before you post it out there or you're going to answer for it you can come back and delete it if you want to but internet is forever it's there now So, hey, it's Kathleen, and thanks again for joining us for a quick episode about a new ruling affecting the devices of cleared folks who work for government contractors. Joining me today is Tony Kuhn, Managing Partner of Tully Rigby PLLC. Tony is an expert on security clearances, federal employment issues, and much more. Plus, he always does a fabulous job explaining the law in layman's terms, so we're lucky to have him and his knowledge and his communication skills on the show today. Thank you, Tony, for joining me. My pleasure. I always enjoy being here. So, Tony, the Federal Acquisition Regulatory Council has implemented an interim rule that triggers the No TikTok on Government Devices Act, which extends to government contractors. Talk to us about how this rule may impact government contractors and what they need to be aware of. I'm thinking in particular this is relevant for cleared professionals who work for a company where bring your own device is very common, and then they may also be using it the same time their personal cell phone for that what are your thoughts yeah so um as we know there's been a lot of uh media attention and a lot of uh talk in congress about tiktok and other social media platforms who owns them what type of information are they gathering and people's pii or different identifiable information are they being exposed is that information being exposed on those networks and I think we can all agree at this point that at least to a certain extent, some of that information is being shared and uh, is being leaked through these social media platforms. So we had the recent case where there's essentially a ban now on uh, individuals using government devices to access TikTok. And many people will spend hours you know, watching the videos and scrolling through TikTok. I know a lot of people who do. And that is not in and of itself going to be a problem for most security clearance holders, but it will be a problem for some. If you're going onto the wrong pages or you're disclosing certain types of information, there's a couple of different guidelines that could be an issue for you. And a lot of people don't think about it. It Just mishandling uh, sensitive information is, is a big one. And misuse of information technology systems is a big one. Those are two different guidelines that come up during these types of adjudications. And uh, the new rule is that an individual is not supposed to use TikTok on any government device. And the question comes up whether an individual who might be using their personal device to do their job, uh, whether they're allowed to use TikTok on that personal device. And the answer is yes, they are allowed to, but uh, it's really frowned upon. So for an individual who's using their personal device to access TikTok, you're probably not going to get yourself into too much trouble unless you're going on certain pages that might be watched or might be um, one that could get you in trouble. And there's a lot of different groups out there that people don't think of. So this is this applies to TikTok. This applies to any other form of social media. Different controversial groups like three percenters, a lot of people don't think of uh, as an issue, but many people think of it as a, this patriotic movement. But the reality is that logo, that page, that, that three percenter identification is really supposed to be the three percent of the people in the country who are willing to stand up against uh, a tyrannical government or, or the federal government. Um, so the federal government <laughs> isn't going to be crazy about you aligning yourself with a group that says that they're the group that's going to stand up and fight the government that's then uh, giving you a security clearance. So things like three percenters, you'll see the Antifa movements, things like that, when there are things going on where people will go on and advocate for violence against governments or government officials. That's a problem on any form of social media. Um, but TikTok is one where I know that there's foreign ties and we know that there's foreign ties and that one could be more of an issue for people if you're going on there and you're posting information or you're uh, going on to certain pages. 
So I'm just going to take this a little bit further and we're, we're starting to see not only TikTok, but we're seeing other kinds of social media pop up. Should we just basically say if it's social media that's based in a foreign country that we should be skeptical? And I'm specifically thinking of there's a very annoying ad that always comes up for me for a shopping site that's definitely Chinese based. And yeah. I'm just wondering, do we do we need to keep an eye on that? as well. Sure. Wherever that social media platform originated, you should be careful about the information that you're putting on there and the different pages that you're going to. And while many people will tell you that the government's not watching you or they're not monitoring those things yet under continuous evaluation, I can tell you that I've litigated cases where they are and the government is monitoring a lot of what goes on on these sites. So you should be careful on social media. You should be careful. Uh, I know a lot of people don't use chat groups anymore or those types of um, platforms or, or sites but they do still exist and some people still get themselves in trouble in these chat groups where they'll go on with a bunch of like-minded people and um, get into trouble later because there's some people in that group who might advocate for violence against the government, you know, which is a guideline A issue for allegiance to the United States. Um, or they might share information. Uh, everybody's now aware of the, the uh, Air Force Guardsmen, I believe it was, who shared classified information on a video game. And it was there for a long time before anybody figured it out. It was scary how long it was there um, and that he was able to just share this information with people. But that kind of stuff happens. So many people then are on those sites and they're befriending somebody who is sharing classified information on their video game. And they could be creating issues for themselves because they've seen this information they failed to report the information. They're now misusing information technology systems, and they're now at least complicit in uh, the, the sharing of sensitive or classified information. So you should be very careful on any of these different uh, social media sites. And as I said, we talk about continuous evaluation. They're looking now at, uh, they're able to track if you get arrested. It's pretty easy to find now if an individual gets arrested. It's pretty easy to find if you're falling behind on your mortgage or your um, credit card payments, things like that. But uh, up until this point, this hasn't really been that much of an issue, but now it's going to start to be an issue where uh, people are going to start tripping CE because of their social media presence. It's already starting. So you, you mentioned chat rooms, and while you know chat rooms may not be around much more, we have Discord, we have Slack, we have a variety of tools that actually the government has a Slack channel and Discord channels and things like that. Some of them are private, some of them are personal. So again, any guidelines on being part of these new ways of being part of chat? You know, obviously, I'm, I'm part of a group of attorneys that uh, we, we practice in the national security field, and we all have a slightly different opinion. Um, we have members in our group who say, stay off of these sites, stay off of social media, stay out of these chat rooms, just stay out of them, and you won't have anything to worry about. And then I'm, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I'm kind of further to the other end where I say, participate. It's good for you to participate and to be part, part of something. And especially if you're in a profession where you've got to get yourself out there and you've got to communicate with people, that's important. You want to develop your influencer base. You want to do all these different things, but don't do them in a way that you're jeopardizing any type of personal identifiable information. Don't do them in a way where you're advocating for violence or um, for something against government officials or against the government. doesn't matter if it's state or federal. We all have our opinion of government. You know, some people, some people really like the government. Some people not so much. Um, and you can be, you can be dissatisfied with the government, but uh, don't advocate for violence. Don't do anything where you think you might cross the line. If you're posting something on social media or in one of these chat rooms that you think after the wine wears off you're going to regret it, you should probably, you know, delete it before you, <laughs> before you post it out there, or you're going to answer for it. You know, once it's there, I had an old law school professor who used to tell me all the time, the "Internet is forever." So as soon as you post it, you can come back and delete it if you want to, but internet is forever. It's there now. Well, great. Well, I know we are all looking forward to Rachel's TikTok dance, but you know, we're not doing video today. So Tony, I'm going to thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. 